The sun is now high enough in the sky that I occasionally have to shield my eyes from it as we head due east. Right now I'm trying to balance upon one of the rails of the train tracks whilst Leo does the same on the other. It is made a bit more difficult by the fact we're still holding hands, each teeter from him yanking me along as well and vice versa. Despite being, as he puts it, a lump of stones covered in fur, he has a lot more poise than yours truly. I think my tail may be a bit too thick for balance and agility. It's more suited for aquatic usage. Once again, dude, you're an otter. Have you seen otters run around? They're like, they're crazy agile. <laughs> On four, on four legs, though. Oh, yeah, no, they like to do tricks and jump around and jump yeah. through hoops and It's startling. And stuff. I, uh, I never... When, when I was on the uh, the water sampling missions and stuff, missions, uh, on the, the trips for work... Uh, mission sounds more important. I would never see an otter until it was just a blur of motion. Because there's just river otters around in California, and they're just around. But they're very small and hard to spot, and, and they, they just take off. They're just gone. They just kind of speed away in the vague shallows and this weird mix of like land and water and they just eva they just like disappear around the corner immediately i um like i said he could be an ocean otter he does not look like one i don't think he's supposed to be that but if you ever want to see something really spooky i think one of the scariest animals that i've ever seen on this planet earth are the like african giant river otters they are so Scary. I love them. I think they're great, but they're huge, like a, a person size, and they they just tear things apart and kill things constantly. Mm -hmm. They all kill kids like all the time. Like they're crazy. God damn. I think I think they're from Africa. They're either I think it might be Amazonian, but just giant river otters, the giant ones, the biggest ones that there are. Scariest thing I've ever seen. I I don't think anyone has made a furry of that yet. <laughs> but Someone probably has. They're, they're very demonic looking. Like we can find them. I'm gonna look it up after this. It's like uh, it's how the, uh, <sighs> I was trying to think of like just I was just thinking of scary things and there's like that one type of like seal or whatever like a lion seal or no a sea lion not a sea lion it's a <laughs> god damn it it's a, it's it's become popular lately because they're just like they're fucking huge and they're they're pretty scary the and people keep seals? making pictures of them no this is this is useless. I'm not gonna get anything. <laughs> I'm not gonna get there. <laughs> I, I will say like sea lions are really cute, but they constantly maul people. They're like gray. It's <laughs> a lot of those. <laughs> well, sea lions are brown, I think. Uh, I yeah, br yeah, they're brown. That just reminds me of how much I could use a swim right now, or at least a bath. I feel like a dusty skeever. What? <laughs> And I must be smelling musky as all hell at this point. People keep and people use musky as an insult in this universe, so yeah, it keeps coming up. I yeah. mean, musky, I guess, isn't the greatest. I mean, I think musky can be kind of sexy sometimes, but I that's, don't think that's, that's how they're I using it. I think that's the usual implication when Ooh, people say that. I walked into a gym, like a locker room full of boys. Ooh, musky, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a mess, and I'm a mess in front of Leo, who just keeps looking better and better the brighter it gets. I'm worried that he's going to take one long look at me any moment now and realize he's made a mistake. Oh man. That's so sad. Hey. I glance over tentatively, increasingly conscious of how clammy my paw pads are in Leo's grasp. I know we kind of glossed over it earlier, but how do you think the others are actually going to respond to all this? I nearly fall off the rail, catching myself with one foot on the ground. Technically it's cheating, but this isn't really a competition. Uh, what do you mean, all this? Yeah, DTR. Define he the relationship. <laughs> he clicks his tongue against the roof of his mouth, just like his mom does. I still don't know what exactly that means. Estupido. My gaze falls and I feel my shoulders slump. Leo looks over, his expression turning apologetic, and I can feel his thumb rub the side of my paw. Ugh. Sorry. I know we're both tired as dirt. Honest though, if I, if I was in bed right now, I wouldn't be able to sleep leaving it all like this. So I guess I just gotta come out and say it all plain like for you, Otter. You're my boyfriend now, right? <laughs> you gotta talk to the other person first. It's pretty quick. <laughs> I blink at hearing the words out loud, though when the moment comes I don't even hesitate. You're my boyfriend, Leo. 
His pace on the track slows, then eventually stops outright. He turns, facing me. We stand in the midst of the abandoned passenger carriers, the plants around us mostly dead or dormant for the autumn. I can't help but have this feeling that we clash with the surroundings, alive and new in something dead and decaying. I'm reminded of a word I studied for a southwestern literature elective I took, the quaz. I've never heard that one before. Yeah, I have no idea. It comes to me, as if recited on a recorder in my brain. That's how brains do. The short paragraph which I labored to memorize the night before my presentation. Quaz, a noun, both singular and plural, referring to anything strange, incongruous, or peculiar. At its heart is the unknown, the mysterious. It rhymes with Oz. To a traveler, it's often the highest... Quas... <laughs> qua quas... 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 Alright, well you've ended this definition with another word that I don't know Quas, the meaning of. The, the like wild wasteland perk in <laughs> Fall in New Vegas. Yeah, I don't really think it helps if you just define one uh, word that people don't know with a word that <laughs> no one else knows either. For me, everything, whether object, person, or event, when seen clearly in the depths of existence, in its quiddity, its quiddity is quas. Is <laughs> A lot of cues in, in the, these definitions, I've noticed. Oh my god. And every road, every alley, to all of, the all to your parlor, the course of a creek, the track of a comet, all are a route to Quaz for any traveler. <laughs> They're fucking with you, dude. They're just thinking all these... They like the cues a lot. Any queryist willing to question, to go in quest to ask the cosmic question of the medieval church drama. Quam <laughs> Qu Quiritus, whom do you seek, O Pilgrim? William Least Hartmoon. Okay, so all of sure. that, I think, that was that was a poem, including yeah. the definition at the beginning. So Someone who likes cues. It was definitely meant to have a flow like to it. It felt like the beginning of V for Vendetta by the end. I, I feel like... They, uh... Valediction Vidoris Victorious <laughs> I haven't seen that movie in a million years, dude. <laughs> I just think it's funny because I think they, he's like, oh, I memorized a paragraph. I'm like, oh, it's gonna be a poem. And then it started out with a noun. And I was like, oh, it's a definition he memorized. And it kept going. And I'm like, this can't be the real definition. It's, it has, has too many <laughs> cues in it. And then at the end, there's there's a name. So I know the whole thing is a poem. It just sounds like made of words. But if they had just told me it was a poem, I think you'd have more of a, a cadence to how you read it. But I was like, we just I don't know how much one. cadence I can have when I can't pronounce every <laughs> fourth word. <laughs> Let's be happy, yeah? See, they also use yeah a lot, too. Yeah. Which is, uh, <laughs> but not in the, in the way that we use yeah, where we're like, yeah, that's true. It's like something, 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 correct? Like, it's it's like a, I don't know, you just put at the end of a sentence to, to fill a certain void, I guess. Yeah, some kind See, of that makes me dialect. See, that makes me think that he's not American, either, because that's like something that you hear a lot. Like, I think Britain does that, I think. Yeah, the UK does I think that. So. Something, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. Hmm. No, yeah, yeah. We don't do that here. I can tell you that for sure. Moisture wells within his russet eyes, and I recall the last time I saw Leo cry. It was after what happened at the lake. It was our first day back to school, and he gathered all of our group together. He started out fine, managing simple English and explaining how he promised he was going to protect us all from now on. And then he just kept saying, I'm sorry, over and over again. Jasmine was the first to step up and hug him, then Carl, then TJ, then me, and finally Flynn. We held each other outside the road and sobbed. Flynn kept yelling something and seemed more incensed than mourning. But I wasn't listening to his words. Leo bawled until he was hiccuping, wrought with himself. We all did. Eventually a passerby called one of our parents and, and we were picked up, one by one. The funeral had happened the week before, and our parents thought we were ready to reintegrate, that things were better. It never felt like things got better. But Leo was always there, keeping his promise. Now, my eyes brim with tears, 
I think it might be in part due to our lack of sleep, but I can't hold back. We stare at each other, Leo laughing and wiping his eyes with his palms. <laughs> you always suck in your cheeks when you're trying not to cry. He reaches up, ruffling my head fur, head fur as he does so, so commonly. I sniff, trying to manage a challenging look, Leo looking blurry in my vision. I let go of his paw, taking him by the front of the shirt and pulling him down to my height. I shut my eyes tight and kiss him, my arms trembling as I do so. Large arms envelop me, his grasp first on my waist, then upon my face as he holds onto my, my tear-matted cheeks. I realize I have no idea what I'm doing with regard to kissing, and I feel like a fool mushing my face against his, but Leo doesn't laugh. No. The kiss is over rather quickly, but I embrace him as soon as our muzzles part. I feel his head rub into mine, a neediness to his demeanor which I share. We continue to stand, each on our own rail, keeping equilibrium, balanced at the center. This makes the hug sort of awkward in structure. That actually reminds me a lot of church pamphlets TJ had that describe the proper way to hug someone of the opposite <laughs> sex. <laughs> <laughs> you make the shape of a house with your body. Back hunched forward, arms around the upper torso, pelvis is at least a foot apart from one another. At least we were all good in the eyes of the Lord so far. Well, I mean, what about the gay part? <laughs> <laughs> it feels like several minutes, minutes pass, Leo occasionally squeezing me tighter and rubbing his paws across my back. I do the same. The position starts to feel a bit sore, especially with my recent battering, and I pull back. Leo seems to have been caught unawares. Waving his arms, he tries to find his balance again. He stumbles and falls off, his rump hitting the sandy gravel beside the track. Oh, shit, Leo, you okay, man? I hop down, but in my haste, my foot catches and I topple over onto the big wolf's chest, adding injury to injury. Leo just chuckles, re-wrapping his arms around my midsection. We meet eye to eye. Clumsy otter. I sigh with relief and kiss him again, Bri briefly, as I'm aware I haven't brushed my teeth in 24 hours as well. It's very considerate. He strokes his fingers through my head for careful to avoid the bump on the back of my head before releasing me. I stand, offering a paw to him. He takes it, though just for show, really. He seems to have no problem standing up on his own now. So, before I was rudely interrupted, I asked you how you thought the others would take us, now that we're a couple. We start, we start walking again, this time with Leo leading. He seems to take fancy with an old, rusted crane. The wolf bounding up the stepladder and clambering over like he's ten again. So, I think Jasmine will probably dig it. Flynn will taunt us relentlessly, but harmlessly. TJ will probably be confused, but ultimately happy for us. And Carl will be probably bewildered, as all hell and awkward about it. Leo reaches the top of the crane's steps. His, He peeks over the metal to beckon to me. Really? In my head, I imagined that when I tell Carl I am queer and stuff, he'll just say, That's gay. And then continue <laughs> playing his handheld without caring. <laughs> gay? <laughs> Carl? Nah, he, he cares. I know he does. I told him that I was gay earlier. He's the only he's the only one I've come out to, really. You you did, huh? I'm jealous. I see his face visibly contort for some reason. Oh, is it because he thought he was the first to know? Mm-hmm. We had a long journey from school to the party, and it was burning on my conscience, I guess. This seems to soothe him a bit, and he shifts focus. Also, I don't want tetanus. I'm good down here. See, tetanus came up again. <laughs> I mean, you think about it a lot around fucked up metal everywhere. That, that is true. That is true. He nods, making his way back down, his chipper gait and utterly foreign sight as he beams at me. The wolf is slap happy hyper. Slap happy. I like it. What about your parents? 
Oh, Jesus. Dude, they probably think you're dead. Like... One day they watch me... One day they catch me with gay porn. The next I have a big-ass Hispanic wolf boyfriend. I... I don't know, man. I want to tell mine about you. They'll be happy to- they'll be happy for me. I guarantee it, yeah? My eyes drift down to my pocket, the weight of my phone still resting against my thigh. I still have a voicemail from yesterday that they sent me. I haven't listened to it. I see some of his excited demeanor diminish to his usual and more concerned expression. Leo heads over beside me and we continue walking. Chase, whatever they say, you've still got me. He approaches me and stops, his fingertips tapping his hips as he thinks of what to say. You still got all of us in the group, and if shit got real bad, you could just stay with us for a bit. Jasmine does it all the time. Pa and Mama are used to having a house filled with kids, but since most of my siblings moved out, it's just me. Is the young kid? The, pr the old parental one is surprisingly the young kid in his family. Yeah, but, I mean, maybe he has cousins and, you know. He's seen a lot of people parent. How about that? Yeah. TJ's parents would never turn you away either. And Carl, well, God knows he has the space, has enough damn rooms to that go unused. <laughs> his parents are barely ever there. You could be, like, that one movie with the boy who lived in the walls of the house, making spooky noises at night and eating their gorgonzola. Gorgonzola? <laughs> Again? It's the word that they just put in every now and then to see if you're paying attention. Yuck. I let out a small chuckle. I remember how Carl used to be really afraid of ghosts a few years ago. I got to hang out with him and play video games as a coping mechanism excuse. Still, now that I have my phone in hand, I still have... I still have that same twisting dread within my gut. I'm just... Ugh. It's like everything is changing and my head is spinning. My folks will never see me the same again. They won't, because you're almost a fucking adult, Chase. The curtness of Leo's tone has me look up from my phone and back to him. Esta yuka. People grow up. You have... and... Really handsomely, I gotta say, yeah? I look off to the side, the flattery is making my neck warm and my cheeks flush. Despite everything, I still can't believe it's Leo that is saying all this to me. It's 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 interesting only because they didn't like we okay, so like Chase has talked about Leo up until us meeting him, right? Yeah. And there's nothing that he said that indicated that he finds him attractive or even thought of him that way. Yeah. And although it's obvious to us, like, Leo's a cute boy, like, he's a cute dude, <laughs> Chase still hasn't even said necessarily. I mean, it, it, it's, it's implied because he's going along with this, but he never even likes, like, while, while, while Leo was like, oh, I think you're really handsome and, like, I'm gay too and I really like you, like, Chase never said anything that would indicate that he felt <laughs> the same way. Like, hypothetically, like, Leo could totally not be Chase's type. I mean, he said muscles, but, I mean, like, like, he's like, oh, we're boyfriends, right? And I was, it's... I was going to say, like, that... When he said that, that was his indication that he's pursuing this, essentially. Because he said that to tar... He said that as targeted at Leo. Yeah, but, but I mean, to, but I, yeah, I've said before, more to people that... Right. Like, I flirted with people and then not wanted to date them. Sure. It's a bit more dangerous when you're gay. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean... It, it, I just think it's funny. Because it's like, oh, yeah, we're, like, we're dating. Right? And it's just like... I, like... It is surprisingly fast. We don't we don't even get Chase's inner dialogue about whether or not he's like was excited about that. I think he just kind of was like, "Oh, like someone else knew I was gay." Like, it's not like, "Oh my gosh, Leo is like such a hunk and he like likes me." Like that's crazy, you know. I mean, he like he's talking about him like, "Oh, he looks good in the in the in the sunlight while I look like trash." But before that mm -hmm. point, he really never said anything about how he actually feels about Leo. Because before then, we we're dealing with his crisis up till then. Mm hmm. I do wonder the relation because there's a there's a question of what order to experience any of this media in and this is like a standalone prequel thing that came out not standalone but not the word it's, sta it's standalone and then it's a separate it's a separate game you download mm -hmm. Rob 65 uh, and even has different sprites for the characters and stuff this one came out 
in like 2018 whereas the game came out in 2020 I think but it had been developed for like seven years so like this came out like five years into the game's development and that and like unlike normal games that uh, like so many games come out all at once eventually so when you talk about their development you're talking about the time which nobody was playing it but with this game like er every time they put on a new, a new build and there was apparently like 40 <laughs> like oh that's gosh. that's like here's more chapters of game and then you just would reach the end of the game and be like gotta wait for more game to happen and then maybe they'd revise some of it over time so in fact they did they like replaced the uh the art and so on eventually and other stuff like that but like it's like it comes out almost in the same format as fan fiction or like the they where they were somebody that's doing a long form fan fiction like for example 50 shades of gray's original version was written like chapter by chapter on a website that'd be pr that where they'd like post every day or every week or something uh to their audience and then they took it all down and, and rewrote it slightly to make it not <laughs> twilight and then that became 50 shades of gray uh like in that form like these came out like chunk after chunk so like I almost wonder how much they think they need to set up certain things. Because they assume because, you might already know. Yeah, because okay. it's like it's a prequel thing given to people that have been given years of content of the main yeah, game. Yeah, it's kind of fan service-y, I guess, in that way, if you already know the characters. So yeah, I guess they don't really have to bother developing or like stating that they like each other or that he like... Because, I mean, if you know that from other other things, and yeah. I guess that's not really necessary for someone going into it with prior information. I just... Yeah. It is worth it is worth noting that yeah like this is when you make a prequel like this it intuitively feels like the thing you would play before the main story and I was recommended by a few people to do that but they it does make me wonder like how much they consider that when they're writing it like or how like how much are they writing it for the sur the purpose of backfilling stuff for characters that you already know about versus how much are they thinking about writing it for people that don't know these characters at all and that's like a thing you have to figure out. I mean, so far it's really good standalone. But that was the only the only thing I would. I was like, oh, that's super fast. Like, oh gosh, you know. Yeah. Tell your fucking parents first, bud. Like, before you get a boyfriend, like, go talk to your fucking parents. Hey, listen to your voicemail. You're stressing me out so much. <laughs> I had the exact same instinct at one point, where I was like, "What's the point of coming out if you don't have a boyfriend? Like, you might as well get a boyfriend first somehow. Otherwise, you're just coming out and." with nothing <laughs> i just think it'd be really a lot it's a lot harder to get a boyfriend if you're not out <laughs> yeah but i also think it's, it's harder for i feel like it'd be harder for parents to cope if it's just like i think it's almost like an insult just be like oh here's my boyfriend instead of like, like oh you were gay this whole time and you didn't talk to me because like, getting a boyfriend's definitely after you figure out you're gay and if, and if you have a parent that's like really caring i feel like they'd be like kind of hurt if you just like skipped that first part and <laughs> just went right to the boyfriend part you know? It all depends, obviously. It's, uh... Yeah, I don't know. It's a lot to navigate. I definitely relate to that weird... Just that feeling of just, like... He keeps repeating the same sentence over and over again about, like, how, like, the, there's just... this. If this thing comes out, it's this thing that you can't take back that makes people look at you differently forever. And that's just, like, a weird... The fact that you usually have to make the choice to do that yourself is like a weird, stressful, fucked up choice to have to go through. Especially when you have to do it repeatedly with multiple, with like different people, like over and over again and so on. Like it's just a whole weird part that nobody really wants to volunteer to have in their life that you have to just like opt into over and over again. Yeah, but I mean, if it, hypothetically, like let's say there's a person who lives and dies and never dates anyone, right? And not, not necessarily like, it just, it's just the way things that work out. You know, for some reason or other. I mean, do you think it's still worth not telling anyone that the entire time that you were alive, or that like not telling them that you were gay and being open with them, if even if you never actually had a significant other, like, is it not worth just being yourself in front of the people who care about you? Yeah, I don't know. Depends on how you feel about those people, I guess, or how you think. And that, that really is the crux of it. I just know, like, uh, it's fucked up that we live in a society that stigmatizes this. Uh, this choice is even introduced as a thing that you have to worry about, as opposed to a thing that you just get to not care about and just move on. Yeah, no, I think it's one of those things where it's just like, you know, it's like I said, because if you, if it is true that if you're like a straight person, you just are like, I mean, it's like, oh, like parents, I have a, I have a boyfriend or I have a girlfriend. And they're like. 
oh good let's like tell me all about them bring them over for dinner ha 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 but but it's like but if you're gay you have to like start out with like parents i'm gay and then you move on to the next thing next thing of like oh i have a boyfriend or a girlfriend i'm bringing them over mm-hmm. for dinner like it do- isn't unfortunate that there's like, that first bit you, you people you have to like preface that you're not the this whatever the, the default you know p- that your parents might think that you are it should just be kind of just be like i like that and your parents are like oh, okay i'm noticing you <laughs> like cool like mm-hmm. that's nice on. honey yeah it's nice <laughs> i have a my little cousin he's uh the one that you met he's gay he came out as gay and he's very young and i'm really like happy for him because he doesn't even like it, it's like it's like no thoughts about it just like i like this and his mom's like awesome like you know good for you honey <laughs> like mm-hmm. basically like like not like i don't care as in like i don't care just like it makes it changes how i feel about you in absolutely no way like oh okay good good on you be yourself you know and then and that's it that's really all it was to it when you tell people you can sense that like moment where they freeze where they're like how do i tell them that this doesn't matter but not in a way where it doesn't matter well yeah it's because like, it's like there's like a dismissiveness to saying it too hardly <laughs> too much like I, that I, I, you know like, what i mean i don't give two fucks. i don't give a fuck why are you talking to me? it's, it's kind of like a, well it's like it's like so but at the same time it's like i i understand that this takes a lot to say but like to me it's like yes and like mm-hmm. and what what of it the thing is, your parents are going to love you no matter what. They're good like that, I know it. I bet my neck. He grasps his throat, looking down at me with bloodshot eyes and a smile. Other shit piles around here are the ones I'm gonna have to worry about. Because no way I'm hiding that I have Chase the Otter as my boyfriend. And trust me. He raises his large fist in front of me, showing the crimson which still stains his knuckle fur. They try anything or harass you for it. I'll make sure they know the consequences. Badass. That's I shift cute. my focus from Leo's fist to his wild gaze. Man, you need some sleep. No, I like it. Keep talking about <laughs> <like> that. <laughs> Embarrassed face. Leo blinks, then brings his fist back to rub the back of his neck. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I do. He sniffs, rolling his shoulders some before looking back to the phone in his ha- in my hand. All right, let's listen to this voicemail, eh? He looks off to the side, sort of muttering embarrassedly under his breath. Double junk, <laughs> <laughs> double jump that sucker and whatnot. <laughs> Very cute. It's so cringy, but I feel like I want to kiss him again. I smile wryly at Leo, and he just huffs. Fair warning, though, you're still probably grounded as hell. And probably, like, probably more so for the fact you just been gone for a whole day yeah. and didn't tell your parents where the fuck you were. I snirk my... <laughs> he says snirk so much, I'm not used to that. My chest feeling tight and my mouth dry. Oh, yeah? I know... Oh, yeah, I know that. I get yelled at if I don't call my parents back within five minutes anyway. I'll miss you while I'm in lockup, though. Leo grins lopsidedly, less wild now. I'll see if I can arrange a conjugal visit or something. I take a deep breath, navigating to the voicemail inbox section. Ready? I can see Leo's family home in the distance now, smoke rising up from the backyard. They must be grilling something. Ready. I press play. Ah! Oh! Oh, what did they say? (laughs) Oh, no. Well, we'll have to see if they reference. Ah, it's written by McSkinny. So all of our context is gone. (laughs) It's not written by Howley. Oh, well, it says says Echoes written by Howley. Yeah, yeah. Echoes written by Howley, and then later written by McSkinny. And this game's just written by mcskinny it looks like it was late enough in the development that that uh howley was off making at astra by now so any theories we had are off <laughs> we're, if we're trying to read into anything based on our, our our dumb guesses at echo and whatnot let's see by white sand how much music was there by kevin mcleod that's usually a lot kevin mcleod's this guy that does uh, a lot of 
of uh, free music. He just puts it out there constantly on his website, and just everyone's allowed to use it. Oh, that's wonderful. And so like, you'll have you'll suddenly suddenly you'll be playing a video game, like an indie game, and you'll hear music that you that you've heard in like a video essay or something before, and what you're like, it? hang on a minute, what is this? What the fuck? Me local singles in your area. Said the kids. Good Sydney. dragon. It's Sydney. good dragon. Sydney. Good. Oh yeah. Good Go look, dragon. Sydney. Said the kid. Was Sydney not was a well, Sydney a koala? I don't know, but Sydney is the dead person. Well, that was Route sixty five. I wanted to look at that longer. <laughs> Bring <laughs> well, it back. Well, it's gone now. It's gone forever. <laughs> We can look at a picture of it later or something. <laughs> a fucking bad dragon reference. Bad dragon wasn't around, were they? I don't know. I don't think they're around in 28... 2008. That might be too far back. Well, they might have been underground at that point. Underground. I was... I saw the launch of bad dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I, sure you did, That's how Keith. long I've been around, is I fucking... Well, it was Nars. It was... It was, a. Uh, because Nars did the art for the original, like, dildo characters, basically. And so, I followed that gallery, so I saw the ad for Bad Dragon when they launched it. I think, like, I, mean, <laughs> but I, I don't remember when it was. It's been a while because of COVID, but last time, time I was on ago. there, they didn't have any of the art anymore. Yeah, no. It's a bummer. There's like one billion dildos on that website, and I don't think they do it. Like, they used to have a, a dedicated... Uh, like Rogue Fang does that too now, where they have a they have a dedicated character assigned to every set of underwear. But Bad Dragon, I, they, I don't think they do that. I don't think if you, even if you look up the old ones that were there, the first ones, I don't think the characters show up anymore. Uh, Jamie Hewlett, who does the art for the Gorillas, has a or at one point he did the art for a, a vibrator collection. Yeah. And each vibrator was really expensive, really nice, or else I would own them all. But they were uh, engraved with a character that he drew for each vibrator. <laughs> the and they're like made of metal. They were great. Jeez. Just something to look up if you have time, guys. <laughs> they're really pretty. Enjoy the lore. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. off to the real Echo. See you yeah. guys next time. Adios, amigos.